Hello, with me and my co-host right here, John the Snyder. How you feeling, John? I'm feeling amazing, Tuesday. How we doing today? We're doing pretty good, man. I Did you just see the intro that just popped up? Did you see that intro? Woo! What? Woo what? I saw that intro about a thousand what? times, actually. I stayed up till 4 o'clock in the morning with Mike Sip Yo. from Split Second Entertainment. The man works Gold what? works gold, man. Yo, shout out to my chef for that for, for that intro, yo. I I, 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 I must have saw it like a hundred times, man. It was ill. It was perfect, bro. Thank you, John Snyder. Thank you, my chef. Yo, that's how we do it, man. Here on Tough Talk. Here we go. So right now we got Mook Williams. Mook, welcome, brother. How's it going? It's a pleasure to be here. It's going awesome. The greatest bar. What a great scene down here. It truly is the greatest bar, especially to have us. Absolutely, man. We're glad to have you. Um, so. Uh, you're a, a lawyer slash agent. Tell me about the, the, this whole agent thing that you do. Tell me about some of the people that you have on, you know, some of the experiences that, you know, day to day that you're, uh, you're going through. Well, it's a challenging, challenging profession. It's hard to get started up, but there's never a dull moment. Right now we represent NFL players. We have eight guys in the league. Final cuts are tomorrow where NFL teams have to cut down to 53 people, and this is one busy week. Teams go from 90 to 53 people in oh, less than imagine. a week. I can imagine. Yeah, this is over a thousand people without jobs. And as so. of recently, uh, Mook is actually looking to sign on some UFC fighters. Our Absolutely. own, our very own Pat Walsh. Yep. Um, so uh, t tell us why? Why did you decide to make the transition from uh, football over to, to fighting UFC? Well, I've always been a huge fighting fan back UFC one on up, and nice. one of the reasons I got into football is because I've always loved football. And I figure I always love fighting, too, so let's get into that as well. So Absolutely. it's going to be exciting to, to get involved on a business level with something that I've loved and that entertains me anyway. I, lo I love to just get involved with it. You should try and do what you love in life. And you know should what? always try to do that. And I think it's about time and we get some serious agents who will deal with football players in the NFL and the big leagues like that to help the MMA fighters, UFC fighters. Man, and I just want to say thank you, man. It's about time. And we are one of those sports that are growing, and we are – like the NBA, the NFL, the NFL, the list goes on, but the UFC is one of those top leagues, and it's about time we need to get some top agents. So we are really appreciate more. Yeah, though. I mean, the, the, politi anyway, the politics are so tough in the UFC. Um, uh, you know, what, what is it that you plan on doing differently, the, you know, set aside from every, every other agent that, that's working on the UFC right now or, or with UFC fighters? Well, one thing I'm going to do differently is not try and be friends and cozy with UFC management. They, they The way I approach NFL, being an NFL agent, is they – you want the management to love you half the time and hate you half the time. That means you're doing the best job possible. I think uh, current management tries to approach it where they are trying to be way too friendly. With, our current agents try to be way too friendly with UFC management. Don't fight for every dollar for their fighters. Obviously, it's a different uh, different situation because you have one dominant promotion and not a bunch of teams. But I believe the fighters are underpaid compared with the revenue that is coming in. Yes. And I believe Amen. that the, the level of representation is not very professional. You've seen a couple of football agents already transition the fighting, fighting representation successfully. Uh, and those guys actually never did that well in football. I think we can come in and even raise the bar higher and raise standards for fighters. I'm very concerned that the level of compensation and the way the fighters are treated, even outside of compensation, is not commensurate with what they are doing and what they are contributing right now and the risk they are taking putting their bodies on the line and entertaining millions of people around the globe. Uh, Doomsday mentioned it's a growing sport. It has the potential to grow even bigger than the NFL, than the NBA, than well, the NHL. Well, that's just it. You know, the UFC hasn't even reached its pinnacle yet. You know, mm -hmm. and now it, I'm sure there's a, a lot of happy uh, fighters out there to hear that there's actually someone pushing. Um, now, let, let, let's get into this. Uh, I mean, be, being a, a lawyer slash agent, do you, think, do you feel as if you have a one-up on a lot of these agents, be, you know, uh, having that background? Uh, yeah, it, it definitely helps a lot. I, I, my understanding is that a lot of the people representing fighters currently do not have an attorney background. Uh, it's very helpful because I've negotiated countless deals and in countless industries in and outside of sports. I've represented other entertainers, non-athlete entertainers. Um, that negotiation experience will really come into play here when you can change every word in these contracts. In the NFL, the contracts are boilerplate, meaning the language is pretty much set. You can't change a lot of the words. You can tack on addenda, but you really can't change the base contract. Here in fighting, you can change everything about the contracts, and you can even challenge the UFC and say, look, 
we're, we want to alter the contract this way if you have a, a prominent enough fighter. So I think that's a tremendous asset to have that negotiation experience behind you, and I, I intend to bring it to this arena and to benefit the people that I work with. That's an amazing thing. Now, uh, if you're a fighter, uh, you, you know, you're, you're – you're in a sports, you, you play football, you, you know, whatever the case is. How, how can a fighter uh, on a lower level find a guy like you? Uh, you know what, that's a, that's a great question because right now I don't think there's an there's a excellent system in place to match up uh, potential agents, advisors with fighters. I know mm -hmm. there's an attempt, uh, I think there's something called an MMA draft out there that's attempting to do sure. that. Yep. I don't know if it's, it's an effective means, but... Uh, everything is still in a in a, only like an incubation period, including management for fighters. Uh, you're seeing a lot of trainers trying to do it part time. Uh, other people that are just associated with the fighters anyway, jumping in and trying to be managers. And I I think that uh, people need to kind of separate themselves and focus. If they want to be management or agents, they need to put that first and strive ahead of that. And part of that is making themselves known the up and coming fighters, getting out there scouting fighters. And, much like uh, teams from, from team sports will scout prospects, I think agents need to get better at scouting fighters and recognizing what it takes in a fighter to be successful on the highest levels. I mean, th this is a full-time job. I mean, I, I know, I know firsthand, yeah. especially with uh, you know Doomsday. It's a, you're, you're on call 24/7. Uh, I get phone calls from Doomsday at four o'clock in the morning a asking to to, to help uh, smack a girl or wh whatever the case may be. No, <laughs> we're, we're just kidding. Hold on a second. So, um, <laughs> with that war machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, it, 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 what are you, uh, now with your company, uh, what, what's the name of your company? Symmetry. Symmetry, okay. Now, how can I go about finding Symmetry? Symmetryreps.com is the website. We just launched a new site uh, less than two months ago, so it's redesigned. Uh, you'll find a lot of information on there. It's all football right now. We will be launching a, uh, a fighting aspect to it as soon as we get that off the ground. Uh, we're on Twitter, at Symmetry Reps. We're on Facebook, Symmetry Reps. We're on Instagram, at Symmetry Reps. I'm on Twitter at, at Mook Williams. You'll see all kinds of tweets from me. There's a lot of fighting tweets. There's some right now about UFC 177 if you go there right now. So uh, that's how you can get in contact with us. We, we get hit up all the time from people all around the country with varying interests, and we try to respond to everybody the best way we can because uh, we know that interaction with, with the fans and with the young people out there is what's vital to, to growing this industry. So uh, you, you just mentioned UFC 177, which is, uh, when, when's that going to air? Tomorrow? Tomorrow night. It's uh, tomorrow night on pay-per-view. Uh, TJ Dillon Shaw versus Joe Soto. How do we feel about this fight, man? Oh, man, <laughs> this fight is crazy. First of all, first of all, big UFC news 177, you guys don't know. Uh... I cannot say this nicely. Bruno. I don't think you can. Didn't make weight. He was cutting weight, got hurt, and he's not fighting tomorrow. Uh, what's he's up not with fighting. that? What's up with that? He, the former world champion couldn't make weight. Now, yeah. I don't want to talk about so much shots about it, but you was the world champion before. You know what it takes to make weight. Mm -hmm. You know what the situation is. You know what they were. You didn't make weight. All right, now, because now, uh, it's crazy. Doomsday, you, you, you fought plenty of times. All right, you know, you know what the situation is. Now, you have three, three basic things that you have to do. All right, and that, what is it? What is that? It's it's training. Training. You have to make weight. Make weight. And you have to fight. And the fight. That's it. And that's it. That's it. I that, mean, that's it's you know easier said than done, obviously. Definitely. Uh, you know, the, the training is is not the, the easiest thing in the world, and I mean, I, I see what you go through. I train with you. I, I've watched what you do. Um, you know, it, it's it's all blood, sweat, and tears. But at the same time, you know, if this is what you're doing as a career, bro, seriously, come on. Yeah, seriously, bro. I mean, like, and. <laughs> TJ is awesome because he called him out. He was like, you know what? I don't think he wanted to make weight. I just think he was scared to fight me. He called him out. And honestly, right. if I was in the same situation, I would have called him out too. Yeah. So it's interesting. But the biggest news too is Joe Soto is taking his replacement. It's taking his replacement. Can you believe that? It's taking his replacement. 24-hour notice. 24-hour <laughs> notice. Can you believe that? Yeah. Now, let me, let me say something for Joe Soto. Shout out to Joe Soto because you are the most – Fortunate, lucky UFC fighter today. Your first UFC debut. You'll be fighting for the world title. Congratulations, man. I want to say congratulations, but congratulations, man, because that's history to make it. You're going to be making history tomorrow. And if you win, oh, my and, goodness. And, and, and also, oh congratulations. My goodness. Listen, man, you know what? You got some balls. You stepped up to the plate, and you're doing the damn thing, and you deserve every minute of it. So, right. yo. That's right. I'm surprised he made weight from the size of his nuts for stepping up the table. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you wanted to bet on this fight, 
The, uh, the odds are Dillashaw minus 1,500. Wow. I've never seen wow. that okay. before. Mm. Soto is minus a plus 700, which is 1500 insane. 1,500 and minus, wow. And plus 700? I mean, wow. put 20 bucks on him. I mean, Maybe we should not? take an early trip to Vegas. Play some bets? Uh, oh, I know, I know, right? We, we need to. <laughs> we need to. Too bad I've been training, though. If I wasn't in training, I will do it. But, you know, I got to get ready. But right, I, 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 I got I to gotta get ready. I, I wanted to say this while Mook was here, you know, as an agent. You know, he, Mook's, you know, he's a, he's a highly intelligible guy. So let, let's 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 talk about this. Doomsday, uh, we talked earlier, you know, we, we were just uh, BSing about you going into the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bro? Let's talk about this. Honestly? Let's talk about this, man. Are you honestly? Yes, of course. Of course. Let me get this straight. I get paid thousands of dollars per night to fake fight. To fake fight. Yeah. Done. Easy. Let's do it. Sign me on. If WWE you says. Sign me on uh, too. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it to fake sure. fight. I'll be the manager. I'll, I'll do Paul yeah, exactly. Hammond style. All I got to do is talk like this. Say, <laughs> say, don't say this. Don't say that. Because I say so and Doomsday say so. Of course. That's, I, I Honestly, I don't think it's necessarily easy. But it's easier than what I do for a living because I got to train all the time and get ready. And I don't go into fight no one win or lose. I go into fight just to fight. But to get paid the fake fight and know the whole situation and all that, oh, yeah. I would do it. I would, I would, yes, yes. If I get a chance after my career or whatever, now, would you I'm stay? Would you stay as Doomsday or would you uh, find uh, another alternative ego uh, to, you know, uh, to no, take on, take on, yeah. you're just going to be I'm, Doomsday, I'm doomsday. through and through your Doomsday. I'm, I'm no doomsday. matter so, all right, you heard no, it here, guys. If, if Doomsday decides he wants to go WWF, WWE, UFC, he is going to remain the Doom. The Doom. That's right. The Doom. That's the name. Uh, Chris is the name. The Doom. Yeah. The Doom. Which we'll be Doomsday. It'll we'll be yeah. the Doom. Point with us. Point with us. The, the Doom. doom. Hey, this will be the slogan. With this, here comes the Doom. And you do this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love this it. This man love can it. cut a promo. That's half of pro wrestling. Yeah, that is. A promo. That is. He just cut a promo off the top of his dome. I'm on top of his dome. I just did that right there. You think I ain't ready for wrestling? I'm ready for wrestling. Am I an athlete? Yes, I'm an athlete. Pat. I'll be ready. People, this was the conversation we had before. Well, they, they what, uh, perform 280 odd days of the year. Yeah, that's great. I train 300 days out of the, day, out of the year. So it doesn't matter. I'll be in the shit. I'll be ready. I can do it. You know, I, I, to get, I can get remember last it, Christmas. I can do it. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. It was, it was last Thanksgiving. I said, Dooms, what are you, what are you up to, man? You know, you want to come grab some grub? You're like, no, I'm uh, in the gym training. Training. <laughs> like, training. Yeah. Mm. All right, man. Yeah, like, like, really? Uh, no touch for you, bro. Training. <laughs> oh, man. But yes, I would love to do it. The All right, dome. so uh, we, we finally figured it out. You know, uh, we're, we're such busy guys, obviously, but we figured it out. What UFC 170 is Demetrius Johnson on the main card uh, versus Chris Carasso, uh, who is 17 and 5. Um, this should be, actually be a pretty interesting fight. This should be a real good fight, man. Demetrius Johnson is a really tough guy to keep up, man. His card is unbelievable. That's why they call him Mighty Mouse. He keeps going and going and going and going. That's the stop. He's like a mouse. His heart beats like a thousand beats a minute. It's, 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 it's an incredible. But this should be a good fight to fight. Um, Chris has a lot of bring up to the middle. He has some power. He, he's been there before, man. So it should be a good fight. But, you know, with Demetrius, he's just an amazing athlete. I have a question to ask. How soon until Mighty Mouse cleans out the division? I mean, how many more guys does he have, does he have to beat? Uh, it's not that deep of a division. Right, we have to look into that. Yeah, we got to look into that. Honestly, yeah. you know, I, I think I think he basically did. Oh, pretty much. I, I think he pretty much did. And it, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, there's no one at his weight class and his division that is doing what he's doing. He's breaking numbers. He's he he's putting up numbers like. You know, GSP used to, yeah. you know, and he's a champion. And it's just his, and it's, that, it's just and that's, that's one of the UFC's main concern, obviously. Now it's, it's you know, it's, a, it's not even a, you put, a, put on a good fight. It's, it's just all about the numbers. If you're making the numbers, if you, if you, you know, you've got some sort of personality, um, you know, lo love it or hate it, man. If, if, if people are watching you and they want to watch you, mm -hmm. that's what they're looking for right now. Yep. So that's, that's something to keep in the back of your mind. Brock, exactly. Brock Lesnar, number one UFC pay-per-view draw in the history of the company. Brock and why is that your all. personal but why, is, why that? is that? Yeah, tell, uh, tell us cross, why. Crossover appeal. You know, re re we were talking about pro wrestling. Pro wrestling fans are extremely loyal. So even though they were probably upset that he decided to give fighting a chance, they, they couldn't tear themselves away. They had to buy that pay-per-view. Exactly. Plus just the way Brock looks and the way he acts and talks, I think that draws he talks in an talk audience. talks and he walks the walk. Yeah, and it that is, draws in an audience that is not going to bother to watch any of the other shows. They, they don't care about the technical aspects of the fights. They just want to see this man beats come in and crush somebody and then when he loses it's also cool because you're like wow that guy actually beat Brock Lesnar that's amazing yeah. and this dude is just jacked and he just got beat 
So yeah. it's a but massive drawing card. Let me tell you something. Let me speak to the WWE fans and UFC fans why Brock Lesnar was so successful. Now, shout out to Brock Lesnar going for WWE to UFC. But Brock Lesnar was a real actual NCAA wrestler, a, a champion at that. And that's right. why he did so well. And the guy actually has skills. UFC. And he has skills. If you ever see him fight, he's a heavyweight that moves like a welterweight. It's amazing. The way he moves, how strong he is, his ability, it's amazing. I mean, he beat Randy Contour for the belt, that's which right. that speaks for itself. That's crazy. And, and Frank that's Mir crazy. destroyed Frank Mir the destroyed second time. Destroyed him. I mean, he lost to him the first time when he was green, but he came back and absolutely blew him up. And let's not forget, Brock Lesnar almost made an NFL team with zero football playing experience, made it the final cut to the Minnesota Vikings. That's insane. Which is, insane. Which so is he's amazing. He's that's just insane. a love guy. Yeah. That's all, he, he just, all around. Um, that's crazy. What are you drinking, Mook? Water. H2O. I think I'm going to have to cut you off. Wait, how many waters have you had so far? <laughs> two and a half. It's too much, right, too much. Two and a quarter. <laughs> That's so awesome, man. It's awesome, uh, man. So who else do we have on tonight? We got uh, Pat Murray coming on. We're going to talk about his uh, new security company. Yep. Um, what, and uh, Mike Wilson, I think. And Mike Wilson. Mike Wilson, Wilson is in the building. He was in the building. Now he disappeared. What happened? Nice what happened? Gone. Thanks gone. for having me on, all, guys. All, all, all I on. see is pretty He's girls, uh, but no Mike Wilson. Real, so real. they so they know he was coming because the pretty girls came, but Mike <laughs> Wilson is gone. So that's when the pretty girls come when, when Mike Wilson's here. But all right, so we're going to plug Mike, Mook Williams one more time. This is, uh, Mook Williams, uh, yeah. let, let's hear your, your Twitter handles. And, plug yourself uh, in, plug brother. Yourself, man. At let's Mook Williams, that's M as in Michael, O-O-K, Williams. The website of our, our agency is symmetryreps.com, S-Y-M-M-E-T-R-Y-R-E-P-S.com. At Symmetry Reps on Twitter, at Symmetry Reps on Instagram, Symmetry on Facebook. You can find us, Google us. We'll be happy to speak with you. Contact us, and uh, we're just looking to do do the best we can by our athlete clients. See, that's what's up. Peace. Mook just did a commercial promo. That's awesome. <laughs> See, also, the dome. His first take into the pro commercial promo. Big up to Mooks, Mooks. Thank you very thank much you, for being on coming the show. On. Thank, thank you, guys. Fun. Thank you for coming on. Guys, 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 peace. So, guys, well, now we got a transfer from to Pat, Patrick, Patrick Murray, Murray. Is Murray. Actually, absolutely, as he has let's, let's his, get his headset, headset, headset on. on, we get his headset on, look at him with his, his white glasses, his white oh, glasses. Like that. Look at that, <laughs> huh? the chain, what's going on, what's, what's up, going man? on, you doing, huh? thank you for having me, thank you for coming, welcome to Tough Talk, so oh. today is Pat Murray's birthday, let's just start off with a big happy birthday to Patrick Murray, thank you, thank you, it's technically happy a Sunday, happy birthday but to <laughs> you, Happy birthday to me. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. done. I'm not, I'm I'm not saying no more. No, we're not going to say We'll get it later. Don't worry. Right. Yeah, we can do it later. We can do it later. Yeah, no, nah, the, bir uh, the birthday is Sunday. We're going to uh, do a pre-birthday uh, bash uh, If today. anybody else called me right uh, now, uh, uh, I wouldn't pick it up. Oh, uh, he's picking up the phone. Uh, uh. What's up? Did you see this? See, this only happens on Talk Talk. He's on, he's on right now. On the phone. On the phone. On the phone. I love this. I love this. This only happens on Top Talk. How, how, people, how many people you know has a show, it goes right on the cell phone? Why? What's up? So, so he's going to talk. Tough Talk. Every Friday night. Every Friday night. Greatest at the bar, greatest bar. Dirty Water News. Right, live. John Doomsday Howard. John the Legend. The Snyder. Snyder. And we want Pat Murray. Are we back yet? We back? Welcome back. Oh, hey. what's hey. up? Hey. 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 He's back, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Back, guys. He is back. That was actually Mike Sip from Slight Second Entertainment, the guy that just made our, our, our intro. We stayed up to Sick intro. Sick I intro. I wouldn't pick up the phone for anybody else. Mike Sip, you know what? I'm not I mad at you because, because of that intro, you deserve to get that answer picked up. So all good. All right. Clap it up for Mike Sip again. All good. Go, baby. But let's get back to Pat Murray. All right, so Pat Murray, we have uh, – all right, so let's talk about – MMSM, what's what's up with that, man? All right, uh, MSSM is the uh, security company we got. It's a nightlife, promotions, marketing, just everything nightlife, a one-stop shop. Nice. We go security, if you need special events, you need armed security, you need guest appearances, you need DJs, you need whatever you need. So if me and Doomsday wanted to go out to the Strippers. club. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to say it. No, I'll, I'll play it. I'll play it. I'll play it. I'll play it. We're we're play it. We, that happens after. No, I'll play it. <laughs> we, do, we, do, we do bachelor parties and bachelorette parties. I'm not mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'll put it over. I'll, I'll play it. Guy, guys, I've been playing. Stop. Okay. Let's go. All right. So if I wanted to hire you for personal security at one of my events or if I wanted to hire you for a personal security, I could, I could basically call you up. You and show up you as long as you're you not booked, or you know, do you have multiple people on staff? How does this work? Uh, it, it depends whatever the event is and who the client is. If it's a high-profile client, well, myself, such as myself, or me, such as you, or you, it's okay. going to be handled by myself or my partner. 
some, you know, pubs, Damn, bars, clubs. We'll send some of our staff out to those. But either way, everybody that we have on the staff is trained MMA fighters through Victory Combat Academy in Stoughton. And, you know, and we make you, I'm going to vouch for this guy because I saw this guy do some serious weight. How many plates did you do? How many plates was that? Uh, Don't lie. Don't right. be nice. It was eight plates per side, 720 eight. times. Effing plates. Eight effing plates. I saw it from my own eyes. I'm a Hold UFC on a fighter. Second. I have to take a phone call. You got to take a phone call. <laughs> eight <laughs> plates on each side. He did it like a beast. So trust me. I'm a UFC fighter, and I vouch for him. He is definitely doomsday approved. Know that. <laughs> Know that we on this camera, we went to this one, but he is doomsday proof and he is a man. Eight plates, I can't do eight plates. They, I can try, but I'm not gonna do it. They <laughs> fight, I lift, perfect combination. Perfect that's combination. how we. That's <laughs> it, it, that's why we melt well. That, that that's why we do what we do, man. That's the best, man. Yo, I will oh. hire him. What's up? So we have to do a, a special thanks to Pat as well. You know, he's been actually doing our blog lately. Yes. Um, which which uh, I want to transition over to the fact that you're doing a EDM screenplay. Uh, yeah, we're doing a uh, EDM screenplay. We're actually uh, talking with, uh, you know, John Hickey on it. Uh, a couple other people. Shout, shout, out, Johnny Hickey. Sh shout out to John Hickey. We're going to talk baby. about Johnny Hickey for the next 10 minutes. Hey, we love you, baby. We got to tease you for a little bit. Thank you for handling stuff out in Vegas while you're uh, while we're out here doing this thing. You're handling it out there. We'll see you soon. EDM Boston, um, shout out to. Go ahead. What we want to do is uh, basically bring a lot of different awareness to the I keep EDM. changing the cameras. Is the, I'm so confused right now. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> what we want to do is they bring awareness out to the EDM scene, and we want to do it in a dark, gritty way, similar to Oxymoron's take on the Oxycontin epidemic. Uh, you know, we're using Molly as a catalyst to show the negative side effects of the culture and that a small group of individuals that are abusing a drug cannot define an entire movement which EDM is worldwide. It's a culture, it's a dance movement, and well, they, sh it, it, you know, it, they it, shouldn't be judged by a certain select few that want to get messed up to be able to party. Agreed. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very sad scenario too. You know, I, I've actually, I went down uh, a couple years ago, I went to Ultra Music Fest down in Miami. Um, and, and, you know, it's, for the most part, it's music, it's fun, it's dancing, you know, everybody's partying, they're, they're there to have a good time. But at the same time that you have those morons that have to ruin it because, you know, they're, they're taking 10 mollies at a time, not drinking any water. You know, if you, it's one thing, you want to take drugs? Cool, take drugs. But hey, take care of yourself if you're going to take the drugs, man. You know, I'm not, I'm not your mother, I'm not your father, I'm not going to tell you not to take drugs. But at the, very, at the same time, educate yourself. If you educate yourself, chances are you won't die. Exactly. I was, well, at, a, I, I, well, I was I, at a club and somebody asked me well, about Molly, and I said, I don't know about Molly, but Melissa's looking great. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm saying. Hey, listen, straight up, I'm an athlete. I'm going to get strikes with Molly, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, in my adolescent years, I had my strikes. You know, I'm not an innocent angel, but I was smart about myself. I mean, come on. You know what? Taking 10 Mollies? Who the effing does that? I do not sign up for that. I don't agree with it with drugs like that, especially young kids or something age. And if you're of age, you know better. You're making a bad representation for EDM. That's what people attach you to. They attach Molly and other drugs like that to EDM, and it's not about that. So, therefore, that being said, you don't need to take those drugs to have fun and appreciate EDM like I do. And the main reason Dude, why we so. and the main Dude, reason so. why we want to do it with the EDM scene is because it's a worldwide movement. What we really want to do is just focus on the fact that there are way too many young people experimenting with things that they shouldn't experiment with, and at the end of the day, it's a, it's always you know a sad thing for them to pass due to you know an overdose. But the project I'm working on actually shows the after fact and the aftermath on the family, and that's what really is the sad part. You know, sure the person you know it's sad that they go, but what really ma what really sad is everybody else that they leave behind, friends, family, everything else. And that's what they don't understand, and that's something that we want to bring to the forelight so we can maybe, like it, one person, we can stop from doing it, and we've done what we want to do. So just exactly. pretty, pretty much raising I'm, I'm, awareness. I'm going to say, I'm with you, man. I'm going to say this. A few hours, hours of partying and being high is not worth a lifetime of both. You know, people like to get high for a few hours and enjoy the time and everything, but the aspect of fact, you're going to see, you look at this man's project, you will see, the after effects, it's, it's messed up. I see people in the after effects on that drug. It's not good. You're it's frying good. your brain. Yeah, I mean, you, you, and it, it, it's here's, crazy. here's the thing, all right? And it goes the same with 
alcohol. It, go, it goes the same with any opiate, any, you know. Sponsored yeah, by Bud Light. As you're taking a sip of your beer. But <laughs> what, what it is, man, you can, you can abuse anything in this world. You know, you can, you can abuse cigarettes. You can abuse coffee. You can abuse, you know, whatever the case may be. You can abuse it, all right? And what it is is it's borrowed happiness, okay? You're taking the, those drugs and you're releasing all the endorphins in your brain. You feel all great. But guess what? The next day, now you don't have those endorphins. And now you don't have that stuff, that little happy chemical in your brain. And you're depressed. <laughs> Not good. And you're wah, too wah. young. You're 18 years old. Your body's still doing – your body is still hormonal and everything else. And you're stunting your growth. You're stunting your ability to be cognitive. You're just stunting so many different things. And at the end of the day, you're going to kill your family by you taking yourself out and leaving your family and friends behind. And that's the right, EDM project. So, so we're doing. Now, now that everybody is good and goddamn depressed, oh, we're back to this camera now. Let's God bring, God, hey, hey Jared, can we talk about something Jared, happy? I, hold on a second, Jared. Jared. I Jared. swear to God, I love you, bro. Jared. You're the man. I love you, Jared. Jared's the and man. I, I love your Beats headphones, okay? Are those yeah. real? <laughs> You're rocking the Beats headphones. You got the Dosakis shirt on. Yeah, Dosakis. Should, should we get Jared out here again? He is the most interesting man. Get Jared out here one more time. Jared, come on, Jared. Get over here, Jared. This is great. There it is. There he is. It's the man right there, Jared. Listen, I'm trying to promote. All right, Jared, do you have a girlfriend? No, not right now. All right, listen, listen. You're looking. She could be out she there. She be out there. Right, we're there. promoting. Listen. We, we are. We yeah, are. Listen. Handle? Listen. Yeah. Let, all right. So now we are looking for a girlfriend look, look, for Jared. Uh, so we, we are looking for him. I'm, I'm going to pass this off to Jared. This is how you can find Jared. Yeah. We're going to find girlfriends. The girl, he's free. Ladies, listen. Jared and go. What's going Get on, in guys? There. I'm uh, feeling pretty lucky to be featured here on Tough Talk with none other but John Howard. Doomsday. Yeah. John Snyder. Patrick Murray. Dude, yeah. Yes, buddy. Coolest guys in the bar right now. Uh, uh, we're at the greatest bar on Boston, French Street. Um, I'm Dirty Water Intern. Follow me on Instagram, Dirty Water Intern. Uh, Twitter, VC Holmes Jared 15. Facebook, VC Holmes Jared 15. Uh, I'll be at the bar scene, nightlife in Boston for a long time now. I got SJ Torres on my side. My yeah. Dave Larkin, my, SJ. my tech intern. Great spot, Dirty Water. And all these cool guys on my side. Yeah. Um, I'll so let these guys get back to their talk unless they got a question for me or. Uh, uh, no, no, we gonna plug you in. So, ladies, this man it's single and available. I am put my name behind him. He is doomsday approved. Ladies, come and get him before he gets taken. So, get him. You heard you heard it from the man. Yeah. It's dirty. It's dirty. Thank you, Jared. I'm gonna, listen, I'm bringing, right. I'm gonna bring Jared on the show every single week every until we find week. we're gonna find him a good girl. We gonna find right? him a good girl. I don't want any dirty sluts, okay? Jared needs hey, a good fourth, girl. Hey, the fourth, the fourth Friday. I don't need any dirty I, I, sluts. I, I, right? I know, I know if this you is. If you don't have a clean pee pee, <laughs> then you're not messing with my boy hey, Jared. I, I, I know this is dirty water news, but we don't want no do dirty water girls. Yeah. <laughs> and how about well, we do? No dirty girls. We'll do. We'll do on the fourth, the fourth Friday of September. Why don't we do a a uh, little uh, love search for Jerry. Love search. Love, love search. search I'm down with that. Let's have a love, love search, search for Jerry. Let's search for Jerry. You hear our yeah, talk, we'll talk. Love. love search on for Jerry. Send any uh, in inquiries into the email. We'll get it over. Oh. Yeah. Send yeah, all email one. inquiries into dirtywaternews.com. Dirtywaternews.com. Or uh, actually, uh, toughtalk617 at gmail.com. Yeah. yeah. There you go. What else do we have? We'll be waiting. Oh, man. Oh, so what else is going on? Oh, so, so let's talk about Smokey Bones, one of our sponsors, actually. Uh, Smokey, Smokey Bones, Bones, pick up Jay Ross. Jay Ross. Jay Ross. Jay Ross. All right, Smokey Bones every Monday, Monday. all you can eat wing night. Every Tuesday, Polly's Pub Pong, brought to you by Polly and Mass Pong. Every Wednesday, Cornhole. It is the spot to be if you're in the South Shore of Massachusetts. That's every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all night long. Crazy cash prizes up to like six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, they, you, you want to know what, man? For a Tuesday night, they actually pack the place in. Yeah, so, 250 you know, if, if people. You're, if, you're, if you're looking for something to do late night on a Tuesday, they have a huge beer pong competition. Um, head over there. You know, there's, there's tons of girls. There's, there's you know, t tons of tons of stuff to do. They got they got huge prizes over there. So, check it out, Smoky Bones in Stoughton. And also in Stoughton is Victory Ray Kalmbach Sports, which right across the street from Smoky Bones. So after you get uh, your big belly, you need some um, carbs or you need some uh, calories to burn, you come over there. I'm going to teach you over there. I teach Muay Thai kickboxing over there. So after you get nice and fat, you come down to Victory Sports and burn those calories. And so any of you pretty, uh, pretty ladies that want to uh, get a one-on-one -on -one grappling session with them too, bam.
<laughs> what else we got? <laughs> Pat, uh, all right, so you have been coming to our shows. You're actually now involved with our show. Um, one thing I have to ask you, and it's been bothering the heck out of me. I didn't say hell. Oh, I, should, I just said it. He said heck. I said heck. Heck, heck is good. For us. Heck. <laughs> you can just say freak. freak. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been, uh, it's been bothering me. What, what is mums the word? Well, hashtag mums the word. What it is is they're very, very tasty treats that um, are mums approved. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they just, uh, you know, there's way too many people taking painkillers out there. So, you know, you can get some tasty treats to take away the pain. Mum's the word. I still don't know what the hell he's talking I about, man. I have no clue. Hashtag mum's the word. But right. hashtag mum's the word. I like that. I'm going to use that hashtag mum's the word. Oh, big up Dominic Amita. Yeah. My PR guy, all right? We actually just came down from a, uh, a pool party. It was uh, it was former Patriots player Ellis Hobbs. Yep. Um, 1330 Boylston. Yo, it was cold as hell. What the yeah, hell? He showed up no, in no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. They played that joke with me. They told me it was a pool party, so you know, I went to a pool party. He comes in with swimming trunks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a pool party. Everybody shows up in a long shirt and jeans. <laughs> I'm the black guy freezing. Like, what the hell is this? He, even, a, he even came with floaties. Yeah, with floaties. He was ready for There's he a was pool ready there. For the pool. No one's in the pool. <laughs> Listen, we no said it was. We that's not a pool party. That's a pool with a party. With, that's a party, a party with, with a pool in there. It was a party with a pool in It was a party with a pool. That's right? what it is. <laughs> I said pool party because it said pool party on the flyer. Obviously, it's 60 degrees out. You're going on the top of a building in, in Boston, all right? It's cold, Dooms. It's cold. Black yeah, people, uh, hold on. Black people don't even like water. Oh, we don't like our That's why he had floaties in a life exactly. jacket on. Thank you. Thank you. Hell? Come that's on, what man. I said. Thank you. <laughs> Exactly. Why you think oh, I right keep it there? Over. I don't like water all like that, but you know, if I see some fine honey and they have naked, I'm gonna get in the water too. Yeah, but he won't walk through a puddle. No, I don't. No, I don't <laughs> he do doesn't go in the ocean. <laughs> we don't do that. No. What, about, what about Thailand? The ocean? Tell me about that. Let's let's talk about the ocean, man. I heard if you go in the ocean in Thailand and you, you pee in the water, you're really not supposed to pee in the water in Thailand. No, they, they have, have those little, things. Little they things can no. float. They float up here. Do Urethra. Oh. If you ever go to Thailand, do not pee in the water. I mean, you might lose when, something when, you sorry, really when like. When I go to Thailand, I am wearing a condom when I go in the water. <laughs> yeah. You got it. It's Thailand. I'm it's actually Thailand. wearing a condom. Come on. Man. Go on. If I go to Thailand, 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 here's if I go to Thailand I'm wearing a before condom go, on the plane. Before you go to the beach. <laughs> He's standing up. It's getting real. No, no, no. Before you go to, when you go to the I'm beach, tough talk. We'll all stand up. You look at the girls, then you look at the water. The girls equal the water. So if you're going to use a condom on them, use a condom from the ocean. <laughs> and don't fly Malaysian. Hey, don't fly Malaysian. <laughs> don't fly Malaysian. You wait, ain't going to get to your destination. Wait, wait. What's Malaysian? Exactly. <laughs> oh, too soon. Uh, too, right. soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> what else we got? Uh, oh, oh, man. I know what I want to talk about. This is the eighth I want to do my favorite segment. <laughs> this bitch of the week. This bitch of the week. Boom, boom, boom. This bitch of the week. We need music for this bitch of the week. Uh, we need music for this bitch of the week. Hold on. This boom, boom, bitch boom. of the week. Ladies and I don't and care. I, I don't care if you get mad or not. You can kiss my whoa. All right. It's Mayweather. <laughs> Mayweather, the uh, boxing champion. It's the bitch of the week. This is why. 50 Cent, call them out. Tell my listen, the ALS talent. So listen, if you can read one paragraph from the Harry Potter book, that he'll pay what? Some no, one page. One page. One page. One page, page from one Harry page Potter book. From the Harry Potter book. He'll pay how much? He will pay seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the charity of Fifty Cent's choice. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> now the now. problem is, Fifty Cent didn't do anything wrong to no. him. No. Ti. Ti did something with yeah. his wife. With yeah. his wife. And Nelly. Nelly. Took his wife before. Oh, exactly. So here's the thing, right? What happened is, I guess the interview with Mayweather. Mayweather was talking about, oh, rappers wish they could be me, they could be thugs, whatever. And 50 Cent woke up like, what are you talking about? Why are you talking about me? I didn't even touch your wife. This dude did this, this dude that. He hit all your dirty laundry out, called you out, and then, yo, you know your comeback was? This was your comeback was. Yo, you know what? I'll box you. $12 million for MGM. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, nah, he, he, he put out two uh, two of his checks on Instagram. Oh, two of yeah. 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 and, and, yeah. and then 50 goes, <laughs> he's like, you work for Oscar, homie. You don't work for you. I work for me. That's right. why I'm independent. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Before I'm 
I don't, I don't respect it because uh, look, like let's just keep it real. If you was a box 50 cent, my mother's gonna, go, my mother, my, my money is gonna go on Mayweather because he's a pro boxer. He's one of the best in the world. Yeah, because he's uh, cherry picking fights. Exactly. Oh, exactly. did oh. I say that? Did I say that? Hey, that's awesome. Justin but, listen, Bieber in the listen, corner. But oh, that's boy. like that's like 50 cent say to you, I battle you to a uh, rap concert, not a rap concert, uh, um, a rap battle, rap battle. So how about that? If he rap, if he challenges you to a rap battle, would you take that? That'd be only fair. You box him, then you rap out of him. Let's see what's up. I have a thing. Ronda Rousey Ronda. said that she yes. would fight Mayweather. Yes. And it would win. Have to be an MMA match. You want to know what? If it and was an I MMA believe, match, I, I believe, believe Ronda Rousey will if whoop she, that. If she said that she would go mm. on the ground, crawl to him, get him on the ground, and take care of business. And you know what? As long, yo, he, it's a no win for him because, number one, he beats up a girl. Or, number two, he gets his... A, two money signs. Yep. Whooped. And you know what? I think that's a fight he would cherry pick see, out of see, because see, he don't want to. Hold on. I got to cut you off. See, Mayweather, they nice. They say Ronda will whoop you. I say uh, I say Ronda will beat you. Oh, no. Yeah. Hold no, on, that's hold what on, I'm saying. Ronda's going to whoop I'll, his I'll, ass. I'll, I'll tell you this. Misha Tate will beat you. Ronda will kill you. Me, 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 <laughs> will beat the hell you. Gina Carano in the expendable would, would beat kill you. you. Are you serious? I, yo, they, 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 they give you a high caliber like fighter. You're not worth a high caliber woman MMA fighter. Misha Tate would beat you. Cyborg you after like 12 months yo, in prison yo, would yo, beat yo. you. I just think you're not even worth <laughs> Ronda Rousey. You're not even worth her time. You go fight Misha Tate, then maybe we can talk. <laughs> and that concludes this bitch One of the week. <laughs> that concludes this bitch of the week. And not to not to take any way, anything away from Mayweather. He does have hands. The guy's fast. You he know, does. he's quick. But if it was a mixed martial arts fight, yeah, but when it's he not gonna uh, happen. It's not gonna happen. But when he it walks happens. out to and I am your boyfriend, listening to Bieber and whatnot, you can, I can't take you seriously as an adult. Right? <laughs> like, exactly. yo, you you were rolling out to Popping these, popping these things from 50 to if I was your boyfriend in okay. Selena Gomez, and I just don't see you. You know, this dude is letting oh, money go to it, his what head. Was it one more time? If I was your boyfriend. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> not, not, let me tell nah, you. Yo, I do a mean. I, I don't like Mayweather anyway because he backtracks. He talks trash and backtracks. He was talking trash about UFC fighters. So he don't respect UFC fighters. You know that we're 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 whatever. We're gay. Whatever. All kinds of stuff he said. And then Dana White tells him, oh, listen, you think you're a badass. Why don't you come fight one of our um, champions? Then he back to us, oh, I'm sorry. I respect UFC fighters. I don't want to fight them, all like that. So that, that's it right there. You're going to call us out and then backtrack from it. Get out of here, yo. Mayweather, you're definitely the bitch of this week. Yeah. Oh, talk. Yeah, you, were, yeah, you, were yeah. you were in the hospital today. Oh, yeah, I was in the hospital today. I think we have another this bitch of the week. Oh, <laughs> we got the bitch of Friday. What happened? Oh, why were you in the oh, hospital? What happened? man. All right, listen, it was medicals. I had to get medicals. And if you could go to my Snapchat, John Doomsday Snapchat. If you're not following me, you need to follow me because on Snapchat, I don't have to be a politician. I can be a real fighter. That being said, I was on there getting poked by this ne needle to stab. Where can they not find a vein on these arms? can't find a vein. Look, I got stabbed like five, six times. Look at my arm compared to yours. They yeah. can find a vein. They could, like, you have veins exactly. with and like I got, myo I got markers. You know, yeah. no, is, I'm a cheap bleeder. I don't like to give blood. My body's <laughs> like, no, this is mine. <laughs> this blood is mine. And finally, I got blood given, but it took like five or six minutes just to find a vein. And you see, I got veins. I got veins for days. <laughs> and look, it, it was crazy. It, it was crazy. But it was a fun time. It was interesting. I don't know about fun, but interesting. Yeah, so you enjoy getting poked by needles? I. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends. It depends on the situation. It depends. Oh, right. Well, no, I would say no because I don't even do tattoos, so I didn't enjoy it. But I, it, it was, it, it, it's weird. I kind of like pain and kind of don't, kind of do. That's why I fight. I don't know. And I'm saying one time I had a really bad accident and I went to the hospital and they gave me something that was great. I don't know what it was, <laughs> but it was great. And that was the one time I didn't really mind a needle. My big behind doesn't have any tattoos because I don't like things pricking my skin. I just don't like yeah, it. You're, you're already big enough of a prick, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah right, anyway. um, so, uh, the one other thing that I, I missed, I, I completely forgot. All right, so you're you're uh, doing movies. Uh, you're, you're, <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? You got you got Ted right. 2 coming up? Well, Ted 2, I got a call that I was going to be, uh, I auditioned for it. Um, I was one of like 200 people that showed up. They picked me as one of eight. I don't think I got that part. I'm um, waiting. Well, they hopefully said, you did. Well, hopefully, yeah. I mean, yeah, hopefully. Because then you can plug Tough Talk. You know, we, we can I add was, numbers. I was, yeah, exactly. I mean, I was, Black Ma the other. I was in Black Mass 
Uh, we can find a girl for Jared, you know. Jared, every Friday. We, we're held in the, the fourth Friday of September, ladies and uh, Well, ladies. <laughs> ladies. It's all for him. Ladies. Ladies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, nah, what, what I'm really focusing on is, you know. Oh, I, shit, Mike Wilson's here? It's a, it's a hobby of mine. You see that? I, Mike Wilson, he's in the hey, back row. Capital Vice. What's up, brother? As I'm texting. Hashtag CVA. Hey, actually, actually um, it's, it's okay. You know what? You know, what's up, Mike? You know, this is why the ladies here, because he's here. It's okay that I'm texting, because I'm actually texting Johnny Hickey right now. So, Johnny Hickey, I love you. I'm texting you right now. I don't know what you want, but I love you. So what I don't give it up. So, basically, yeah, with the, uh, the the whole, like, filming stuff, it's a, it's a big hobby. I mean, it's fun. You get to meet cool people. You get to see behind the scenes, especially with the projects that I have coming up. Um, and, and the main do, thing I want to do is um, a few years back, I had auditioned for Big Brother. Mm -hmm. uh, I've watched the show for years. I'm a big fan. And... They told me, oh, you're great, but you're too big. Because I was like 120 pounds heavier. Yeah, you're not exactly auditioning for like Lurch for Adam's family or anything. For that exactly. Either, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they say they said if you want to be on uh, Planet of the Apes, you know that fat, that fat bastard that just sat in the, the cage? That was Actually, you. when they escaped, they, he didn't even leave. Yeah. I played him. Really? That was actually me. Wow, huh? It says I. It says uncredited. No. <laughs> so you're just a man. Of, you're, you're a man of many talents. I, I I like what you're doing, Pat. Well, if a talent sitting there just looking like a hairy ape, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I I I do very well. Uh, <laughs> but nah. So what I want to do is uh, get on Big Brother, and uh, I think you know. That's something that we're going to help you out with, you know, with my marketing background. Well, you know, I figure, uh, hey, we got this guy on the UFC. We got you on and off TV everywhere. We got Pat on the Ultimate Fighter. It's a uh, John, John, Pat. I'm the only Pat in the squad, in the in the foursome that's not on TV. So, right. Yo, Pat for BB17. You know what's the funny, the funny thing is, is two Pats and two Johns, right? <laughs> now, it, it, here's the funny part. So, John, John Howard, Pat Walsh are the fighters. Josh not Pat Murray, are the promoters. How the hell did that happen? How that <laughs> Two Pats, two Johns. What but you know what? We get it done. And, and you, know, you know what? Bring in good shows. We're going to be, uh, we're go oh, that's I wanted to segment into, is the Beast Coast Tour 2014. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Starting yeah, in go. October. Nah, nah, Which nah, camera nah, nah. are we on? This one here? All right. Ooh, Starting in you. October. Anybody on the East Coast that owns an MMA gym, we are doing a tour with John Doomsday Howard and Pat, the Beast Walsh. of the East Walsh. <laughs> now, Love it. you contact myself or John Snyder. You can get us out. Uh, we'll have all the information at the end of the show on how to contact us. If you want to get on board, we are going to be doing 20 gyms. We're going to select out of 100, 20 gyms to hit from Connecticut to Miami. If you're one of the lucky gyms, we're going to give you a great rate, whatever. You're going to get a great swag bag, and you're going to get a three-hour seminar by both Doomsday and Pat Walsh. Now, this guy here is doing show. He's doing seminars on his own at 100. We're doing this. We're doing the two of them for 100, just because we're keeping it in America, folks, and we're keeping it on the East Coast. That's why it's the Beast Coast Court 2014. October 3rd to October 20th, all the way down. And we're going to be doing a couple of club stops. We'll get Adam uh, on, yeah. on a different channel. Yeah, on a different channel. That's what's right, so, up, uh, man. That's what's up. Anything else you wanted to add into the show, man? Oh, you don't want to add, man? I want to talk about some females, man. I really want to do it. Now, you what know. about the females? I, you know I mean, you know, I, I, you know females are funny. They do they, they, they do funny stuff, but this is what I'm talking about. So females will post half naked on Facebook, IG, Twitter. Like half naked, you can see everything, like everything. But and it's then, photoshopped and it exactly, says no filter. Like, oh no, not even that, right? <laughs> Which I'm okay with that. But look at you, like, oh, I want a boyfriend. I want a husband. Then ask you, can you be my, can you be my boyfriend or husband? I look at the Hell like, no. No, here, hold on. No. I, no, I saw, <laughs> no. I saw a thing no. on, I saw a I'm thing on Instagram, and it was a girl that posted it. And she said, if Photoshop is okay for models, steroids should be fine for athletes. <laughs> and 110%. All right, and now maybe, uh, all right, I'll, 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 let's, I'll go, and I'll rewind that. Performance enhancement drugs are okay for athletes. 
My thing is, if you're a model and you get in Photoshop to the point that you're not even recognizable in real life, you're not a model. You're a pretty, pretty much you're mannequin that you're able to put makeup on. If you're an athlete, your job is to perform, and any type of enhancement that you do to your performance shouldn't be regulated, in my opinion. And I've been an advocate for that since I was 21 as a personal trainer, as a sports conditioning coach, as a strength conditioning coach, and as a sports performance nutritionist. And I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. What I'm going to say this is like, girls, women, girls, whatever, they do that both. <laughs> and it's like, are you serious? Are you serious? But look, look, I'm not War Machine. You're not Christy Mack. I don't do that. <laughs> no, definitely not. I don't do that. I, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, the, the, no. w women to respect, no. uh, they, 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 they demand a certain amount of respect from men. But you know, like if you have no dignity, dignity for yourself, and you're, you know, you're, you're pretty much naked on Facebook, on Instagram, and showing off your body just to get likes or you know, wh wh whatever it is, you know. What, what do you? How do you expect to get a good man? You get can't. Exactly. You're not. You're not gonna get a good man if you're showing off your body like that. I uh, absolutely no. not. And the one thing that really messed me up when I was growing up too is like, what's the? All right, so a girl that goes to the beach in a, in a bikini, okay, and like basically like her her butt cheeks are hanging out and like her boobs are hanging leaves out. nothing to the imagination. But it, you know, it, 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 it's like okay, you'll go to the beach wearing like practically nothing, but then like. Now you're in your underwear. Oh my God! Don't look at me. Yeah, like, what, bro. What I was is like, that? "What are you talk about?" No, here's the funny <laughs> part: you look more distinguished in your underwear than you do in your bikini. The bikini, you get two bra spots, smash your boobs together. You get these small bikinis. The butt is that area. Out, out and everywhere. You know what you're doing. You know hey, maybe, you doing. maybe, maybe, you know maybe I'm old school. Yo, maybe I'm like, old school. Maybe I'm old school. But honestly, do you still wear a one piece? Uh, no, I do the boar wrap bikini number oh, okay. one. Um, <laughs> and just so you know. Um, at Big P Murray on uh, Twitter, at Big P Murray on Snapchat, and Cutsync on Instagram for those types of shots. A little uh, plug right add, there. You can also find them on at shamelesspromotion.com. <laughs> I actually am uh, <laughs> uh, not only a uh, client, I'm also the owner. Uh, <laughs> but nah, you know what? Women out there, stop trying to make yourself look pretty through filters on Instagram and all these different types of Photoshops and whatever. You know what? If you want to look pretty, go to Newberry Street. Go to this place called Safar. Ask for Courtney Sims. Shout out to Courtney she Sims. She will make you look gorgeous. Well, from head to neck because that's what they do. They do hair. Uh, but you're walking out of there looking like a million dollars. And... I just want to give a, a shout out Looking, to C-Sense. Hey, like I'm giving a shout out to her because she's pretty herself, so that's what's up. And for anybody looking for a cut, dig this and Randolph. Had the same barber for 18 years, I love baby. this guy. I love this guy. What's he up, plugs son? everybody in. Everybody in. I can, I can learn some stuff from him. So what else do we have on the schedule, man? Uh, did we do the whole schedule? Did we do that? Yeah, we, we got we, the we Beast Coast. We got everything. We did the whole schedule. We did it. Actually, no. Oh, wait, no. Is there a special girl in there in, in my life? No. But no, no. I, actually, uh, there's something I want to touch. Something <laughs> you I want can't to touch ask on. my questions. <laughs> one more thing, I'm one thing, reading it. I'm not even <laughs> one more thing I got to touch on, and then I, I think I think that should be it. So on Facebook, on Facebook now, they posted two black guys fighting. One guy is getting stabbed. Like, you can see the knife stabbing, piercing the body. But the bugged out part is, is in the train station. Everybody's recording it, but no one's doing nothing. Nothing. They didn't even scream out they world even, star. Nothing. They just sit there and let him just happen. I was like, what the? Now, what? Now, now, do you think there's a difference because it's two black guys? or? I'm, I'm just saying I'm if confused. it happened to be, uh, if uh, wait, it happened wait. to be. I, I, I no, 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 it pisses me off about, about that situation because if it was in a community situation and, you know, some guys got shot or something like that. No. You know, everybody want to come together, big candles, like, oh, and everything, and which I agree with because stuff like that happen. But when you see something live, if you could stop it right there. Stop, stop it. Stop it. How are you going to sit there? the Yo, sad part is. How are you going to sit there in the train station? The man getting stabbed almost to death. Have yeah. you no seen it on the news, nothing. though? Have you seen it on the news? No. 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 Man, that's the crazy but, part. But, but, you know what? That's the God best forbid, part. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid it was a Caucasian guy <laughs> and a black guy. <laughs> it would be all over. Nancy Grace should be talking about it. And right now we'd have a change.org program going on to have the guy nosed. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy. Uh, you want, you I, know I, what? There's violence yeah. everywhere, folks. You know what? 
you got to start trying to make things a race it's thing a, and just make it a violent it, thing. It, I, I was actually ignorant people doing ignorant things. You were watching the Pat Murray show. Um, yeah. <laughs> listen, Patrick Murray, every uh, the, week. The, 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 big, the biggest thing is, is yeah, you know, I, I was actually watching a segment with uh, Morgan Freeman on 60 Minutes. Or you might have seen this in the past. Morgan Freeman says, you know what? How do, we, how do you end, end racism? Stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. Seriously. That makes the most sense. Stop talking about it. Morgan Freeman. Exactly. I met you out in Vegas. I love you, man. Are we looking at this camera or this camera? This camera right this here. Camera. Thank you, Jared. 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 Morgan Jared. Freeman, you're Jared. great. Jared. Jared. Jared is Single on man point Jared. with everything Yo, you see does. this guy behind me? Oh, pa- my God. Oh, Pat Walsh. 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 It's Pat Walsh. <laughs> Pat Walsh. <laughs> I want your autograph. The UFC fighter, Pat I, Walsh. I didn't think you were coming tonight. Me neither. I came. I came. You came? I came, and then I came. It came, and he came. That's awesome. Well, well we're glad that you came. <laughs> you got that you came. Me too. Me and now he's here. Oh, oh so. man. Yeah, we were actually just talking about racism. Yes, we are. Uh, too, there, there, he, he brought it. Yeah, you love racism. Uh, Pat, Pat Walsh is a huge advocate of racism, actually. Yeah. Um, question, what are three things a black guy can't get? <laughs> a, a All right, these are for any guy, potential sponsors. Lip, <laughs> and a job. Oh, I got that. All right. I agree. All right, so the two black, it was two black guys. One was stabbing the other black guy. Yeah. Now, well, all right, let me, let me ask you something. Wait, wait, who got the bucket of chicken at the end? The one who got stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Make light of it. You no. Know? Let's the have only fun thing with is, it, you know what? You know no what? Ratio. Now, no ratio. You know ratio. what is messed up, though? Is at the end of it when they said, you know, how bad it was and what, what a tragedy. It did say this is brought to you by Roscoe Chicken and Waffles <laughs> at the end. It was just a PSA disclaimer. But, I mean, come on. You know, you got to get your money in when you can get your money in. You got to get it. You, you got to get it. Yeah. So, uh, hey, uh, hey, guys, I think it's racist. Don't get mad because it's a KFC chicken commercial with one white guy and a whole bunch of black people. And you see this show. And, and, so don't even try so saying we're being that. stupid. And then the white guy gets the white chicken, then all the black people are happy. So oh, don't even go there. Let's not, let's, not, let's not go there. Let's go there. And if I'm you black. don't like fried chicken, you're not American. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Southern, Northern, Western, chicken and waffles. You uh, you go to Texas down south, everybody eats chicken and waffles. And they all have Confederate everybody. flags. But everybody. they all love the same food. Chicken. <laughs> Do I'm saying, I love how, it. How is training going, man? Let's, let, let's, uh. uh Yo, hey, oh, Brian Ebersol. Let's just show him where your training's at right now. Well, it's right here. Uh, Bam. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> You have no. to, you have to take three weeks, four weeks, eight weeks to drop weight. He's already at weight. At, at weight, ready to go. He stays I, at weight. I'm ready. I'm so ready, yo. No. I call it off the chain, like DMX is to say. No, you're, you're My dogs are off the chain. <laughs> and I'm off the chain. I'm ready to go. What? Wait, I'm like, what? 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 Ah! All right. <laughs> but so. you. That's my man's in them. 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 When you're ready for me. <laughs> See, for those who don't know, me and my man Doomsday, we walk down the Las Vegas Strip. What? We take it damn slow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> how we do. Right over so. Yeah, it's a scratch. I can't wait to see you. Ah. So, on that note. On that note. <laughs> hey, guys, guys, you are watching Tough Talk. Tough Dirty Talk. Dirty Water News. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you, Happy. Pat Murray, thank Pat you for coming Murray, through. Thank you for coming out. God bless, man. Uh, so uh, next week we're going to have a couple of people. Uh, we're actually bringing Mike Wilson back on. We're going to be talking about Charlie Robbins. Uh, he is uh, joining forces with Mike Wilson to make Four. a tattoo. Capital Vice Apparel. Capital Vice Apparel. Apparel. He's going to make a uh, tattoo edition of Capital Vice Apparel. Um, you can check them out. Uh, cat, what is it? CapitalViceApparel.com? Cat, CapViceGear.com. Yeah. Oh, nice. Guys. Yeah. And also, I, I and also. Purpose, Hold on one second. Know, but he doesn't know it yet, but SJ is going to be our secret Yes. We're gonna put SJ on the stool. He's gonna be a tough tech guest. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. You can go <laughs> go on the website, order stuff. They have uh, last week's guest, Charlie Robbins. They're doing a new line. Uh, it's either Vice Edition or Sacred it's Vice. Gonna, it's gonna be uh, Vice Edition. It's going to be sick. So, so guys, you know what? Listen up. Uh, sorry to cut you off, man. We almost out of time. Thank you very much for listening to Tough Talk. Yo. I am John Doomsday, John Doomsday Howard. I am tired. John Doomsday Howard. John the Snyder, John my the co-host, Snyder. the man of the hour. Pat Murray, thanks for coming out. Thank you for having and me. And we are you. on Tough Guys, Talk, Dirty Water News. At John the Snyder, at John Doomsday Howard. This is Tough Talk. Back to the intro, Mike Sip. Hello. Woo. At Woo. Big Pete Murray. Yeah.